purpose of tithing is to teach us always to put God first in our lives. So that first fruits given teaches us, as we do that, that in every area of our life we need to put God first. Genesis 14, 20. And blessed be God most high, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. 2 Samuel 24, 24. But the king replied to Aaron, Now I insist on paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. Not sacrificial giving. Matthew 23, 23 from last Sunday. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin. But you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. In 2 Corinthians 9, 7 and 8, each man should give what he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Of the ABC of the Northwest now for many, many years. You have a long history of this. 
and uh, you've accomplished great fruits that you may not always realize. Uh, things like, again, Pastor Jeff being one of the mass mentor pastors that shepherds a group of other pastors, so it helps keep us connected and together and good things that happen in our churches. So our LLC groups or study groups. Uh, I've been in other church bodies and I've never had this kind of fellowship and camaraderie and, and support that I find in the ABC universe. I love it, really. Um, you have something to do with the guidance for churches, especially when they're between pastors and the interim process and getting the new ones. And I understand you went through a long time, search time before Jeff got here. And so, but it took guidance and things like that, as well as the Holy Spirit of the work to bring the, the right fit for the dance you have today. Praise God. Um, the region also works to start uh, church starts, new plant church plants. And uh, I am certainly the recipient of that. I'll tell you a little more about that in a bit. But one of the other things that the region does is it helps restart churches. We have a lot of churches in the Northwest that have a history and sometimes a good history that something has happened over the last 30 years when the culture has changed, the people has changed, the graphics have changed, and some of these churches have died. And some of them are in places that have a possibility of a new start in the future. So that's where the region comes alongside and helps us restart. So we've got two in our own LLC group, one in Bremerton, which is a pretty significant metropolitan area, you know, the, the, the Navy base and everything. First Baptist Bremerton is down to nine people in church. Yeah. And so right now, uh, Matt Stallings is there, and the region has come in and helped restart the momentum, and uh, already he's working 51 or something like that, and there's just so much potential. But it, it takes something like the region to come alongside. Also, in a town called Gorse, do you know what Gorse is? <laughs> hey, all right. <laughs> yeah, it's right there on the bend, it's a quote Bremerton. Well, they've had a church to struggle for years, and they're getting to restart too, so it's, uh, it's a good day. But I, I want to thank you on behalf of the congregation of the New Community Church of Union in Union, Washington, which is located on the south shore of Hood Canal, that funny little arm-like fjord, we like to call it, that comes down from Puget Sound, just on the east side of the Olympic Peninsula, Olympic Mountains. It's a beautiful place. Been a community there for 150 years. One time before there was a Seattle, they envisioned they would be the Seattle. It had a big port and everything like that. Of course, that didn't happen. One of the things that never happened there in 150 years was the church, the church that stayed. And so people had a burden for that. Uh, other ABC churches around the area had a burden for that, a vision for that. And the uh, Lord put things together in the right way. That I had just bought a, a piece of uh, cabin out there, recreation, retirement, who knows what. I should have retired. <laughs> Um, but uh, the Lord put it together, and so they extended me a call to be the church planter. They did that, by the way, with $167 in the checkbook. And I said yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, um, through the support of churches like you, the ABC of the Northwest, and some also some funds from Washington Baptist Convention, and some of our churches around our area, uh, we had the funds to get going, and then two and a half years we were self supported. God be praise, right? It's been a blessed life. And God's blessing has been upon this incredible beginning that we've had. And I'm really thankful, and our people are thankful for supporting churches like you. Um, some of the things I'd just like to share with you, just as the sense of blessing that we've enjoyed. Uh, about four or five years into our existence, uh, we we still do. We meet our, our Sunday morning services are in the fire hall. And so we have two services in the fire hall we, where we worship about 135, 150 people. And, and uh, we have a great time. But um, we do a lot of our work and our service in the community. And we live in a community focused. Our Christmas service is always in a barn down on Hunter Farms. And so we have a service called the Lady Born in the Barn. What would it look like if Jesus was born in this valley? And it's really a lot of fun to be up there. And a number of things focus on the community, but it's, it's given us goodwill. And um, we had our first program like Encouraging the Tithe in 2007. And uh, we are, annual budget then went from about 90000 to 150000 
and others because we have focus on things that people say this is making a difference in our community and people also are growing in their discipleship learning what it means to frame their lives around the commitment to Jesus Christ and what, learning what it means to have Christ be the center and priority and then the freedom it brings to your finances and to every other area of life. Now along with this, when we first started going, there was a lot of suspicion. It could be that way in a small town, kind of a, a town that prides itself on maybe a uh, little eclectic, no such thing as truth. Uh, and you know how those yeah, communities were kind of reserved in some places, impoverished community in other places. Um, so we were a little comfortable with this thing. Church is going to come in, it's just going to suck the life out of this community. <laughs> well, we worked in the schools like you guys are. We got, gave away medical supplies, we gave free meals, we held a free Thanksgiving dinner, we gave all the proceeds to the food bank, and all these things, you know, just patiently serving. In 1998, I got a phone call from the Improvement Club, our local community club, that had been meeting there for 50 years. And they said, Terry, we've been watching what you're doing, and <clears throat> we think you're the only uh, group, <clears throat> excuse me, with any energy left in this town. <laughs> we want to donate to you our 11 acres. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they did. They just donated that land to us. And uh, so it, it's been a real blessing. It's not just the land, but it's what it says about the blessing that God has given us, the favor that we have found by being a servant church in that area. And uh, so I praise God. Part of celebrating the grace or celebrating uh, the blessed life is recognized when, when God does things, isn't it? And saying thank you. And that's so, so important in understanding this living the blessed life. And that's why we come together tonight to give thanks and recognize what God has done, what He is doing in your midst. And 